I'm happy to say that we have the absolute perfect guest for today's show. Lawrence J. Kotlikoff literally wrote the book on Social Security benefits. It's entitled, Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. It is a New York Times bestseller, which was recently published in a revised, updated edition. This particular book has also been called an indispensable guide for anyone wanting to get the most out of their Social Security benefits. In fact, it's just one of the many books written or co-written by Mr. Kotlikoff, who's also an economics professor at Boston University, an associate of the National Bureau of Economic Research, and director of the Tax Analysis Center. He's also president of a financial planning software company, among many other things. He also happens to be running for president, so we'll definitely talk about that. Welcome to the show, Dr. Kotlikoff. Good to have you. Great to be with you, David. Thanks for having me. Your book opens with a chapter entitled, Why We Bothered, which explains what motivated you to, and your co-authors to write the book in the first place. Can you talk about some of those motivating factors? Well, uh, people are leaving uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, depending on their circumstances, on the table because they don't understand the uh, terribly complicated uh, outrageously long number of rules or, uh, that uh, Social Security has. They don't understand the payoff from waiting till uh, 70 to start collecting your retirement benefit and uh, the payoff to wait till 66 in many cases uh, for your spousal or uh, mm -hmm. widow benefit or divorce benefits. And uh, they also don't understand that there are about 12 different benefits that are available to you under Social Security, not just your retirement benefit, they don't, and the third thing they don't, do, do not understand is how to time your benefits to be strategic to make sure that you get as much as you can. So uh, we're trying to make sure that everybody gets what they paid for. We're not trying to bankrupt the system. The system is already bankrupt on its own. We're trying to make sure that things are fair within each generation. If we're going to change the law uh, to fix the finances, we should do that, and I recommend that. But we should not have a system where some people Get, get a whole lot more money than others just because they uh, understand the rules and the others don't. Mm -hmm. Well, with all due respect, Dr. Kotlikoff, uh, I'm sure your book has a lot of valuable tips, but can our viewers just call the Social Security Administration and, and learn this stuff directly from them? Uh, no, you wouldn't want to ask Social Security anything. You want to really be in a position to tell them what to do. The combination of this book, Get What Yours, a Revised uh, Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security, and my company's software, uh, which is a $40 program, which is called MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com. Those two things together will put you in good stead to tell Social Security exactly what to do. I've had a lot of people that have been told the wrong thing by eight separate people uh, from Social Security uh, that would have cost them tens of thousands of dollars if they had just said, okay, that's the answer. Right. But um, you know, in the end, I've kind of communicated with people at Social Security, got things fixed. But eight people in a row had it wrong. And that's mm -hmm. very typical. You get people all the time getting the wrong answer. It's interesting because I, I hope you know that I was being facetious in asking that question as a financial advisor. Yeah, I, I realize, David. I, I've called yeah. also, and I've had the same result where you get so many different answers, it's, it's frustrating. And, and yeah. can you tell our viewers roughly how many different ways there are that anybody approaching retirement can actually elect to take Social Security so they can better understand the complexity of this? Well, I'll give you an idea. Suppose you're a spouse and you've got, um, you're, you're, so you're married and maybe the, uh, the husband's older than the wife. Maybe you've got a 45-year-old wife and a 62-year-old uh, husband and they have a disabled child. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, there can be 25 million combinations of decisions about when they should take uh, child and care spousal benefits, ch uh, child disability benefits, uh, disabled child uh, benefits, let me call it that, uh, retirement benefits for each spouse, then there's survivor benefits for the child, for the wife, uh, it just goes on. So hmm. 25 you, you need million. to actually have soft, software that can handle all that. 25 million is a huge number, it's bigger than what I've heard. How about for yeah. just a normal couple entering their 60s? I'm sure that number would be a well, lot smaller than 25 million. So approximately, what would that be? Well, it could be it could be as low as 500. Uh, you know, our software actually calculates the number of uh, 
uh, choices we look at, uh, many are dominated. So when we say that, if, that we're looking at 30,000 choices, it could under you know it could really represent 25 million. But uh, a typical uh, run of our software would have 30,000 different combinations that we're actually analyzing. Great, and and that's actually gotten a, to be a smaller number because there are some methods that I understand were actually taken away just a few months ago in the month of April, is that correct? Well, there was some, uh, the ability for younger people, people under 62 on January 2nd uh, of this year, 2016, the ability of, of those people to take just a spousal benefit at full retirement age and let, and let their own retirement benefit grow till 70, that's been taken away for those younger people. But uh, there are still a lot of people in that age range between 62, let's say, and 66 who can still uh, collect just a spouse benefit while waiting to get their own retirement benefit. Then you've got some low-income spouses who can, or divorced spouses who can still collect on their current spouse or their ex-spouse. They can still collect spouse benefits. So it's not like we've uh, eliminated spousal benefits. We've um, eliminated those for higher earning uh, spouses, but not for um, lower low income spouses. And then you have cases where you might have a young spouse who's too young to do this, but a, a 64 year old spouse who could collect. Now you have the question, should the young spouse at 62 take her retirement benefit early so the older spouse at 66 can collect a spousal benefit on the younger spouse's work record, and then when the younger spouse reaches 66, they can suspend their benefit and wait till 70 to take a higher number. So uh, mm -hmm. there are lots of different combinations that we uh, we do need to consider. You know, we're because just because this can mean big money. We're just starting to peel back the onion on Social Security today with you, and right. and I can already see you know the head spinning of a lot of our viewers. We're going to take a quick commercial yeah. break. Uh, we'll be right back with Dr. Kotlikoff, and we're going to identify some of the most common mistakes that people make when electing their Social Security benefits, and then we're going to talk to him about why he decided to throw his hat into the ring for the presidential election. We'll be right back. We're back today with Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff, who, again, literally wrote the book on Social Security benefits entitled, Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. Dr. Kotlikoff, tell us, what are some of the most common mistakes that cause recipients to shortchange themselves when it comes to Social Security benefits? Well, the, the, the biggest mistake that my co-authors and I uh, focused on in this book is impatience. The, the, everybody has it in their mind that they're going to die on time at their life expectancy or they're actually going to die be before their life expectancy. They don't want to think about living till 96 like my mom, she's 96, uh, because I think they're worried about jinxing, jinxing themselves. They think that if they start focusing on living to an old age, they'll die tomorrow. But the real danger with financial um, uh, matters when it comes to longevity is not uh, dying early and not getting your Social Security benefits because if you die young, you'll be in heaven, you won't need any money, right? And the real problem is living to 100 on cat food. Mm. So if you wait till 70 to take your retirement benefit, you're going to get a 76% higher number adjusted for inflation than if you take it at 62. Now most Americans, only 2% are taking it at 70, so 98% are taking their retirement benefit before age 70. So this has got to be uh, the wrong answer for almost, uh, you know, not for everybody, but for probably about 85 percent of the population sure. that's taking the benefits too early. And when I've seen the numbers, when you factor in cost of living, many times the benefits taken at age 70 can be close to double the benefits taken at age 62, which means most people don't realize that all they really need to do is live to be 80 and they're ahead by waiting. Isn't that correct most of the time? Yeah, well, we have to really, uh, David, look at not just kind of a break-even scenario because this is a, this is a uh, insurance product. Social Security is just a big insurance company. And we have to worry about the, the catastrophic loss. And in the case of our house, it's our house burning down, so we get maximum coverage. Here, it's our living to 100, 
maximum coverage means getting the highest benefit for the longest amount of time. And that means being patient and waiting, waiting till 70 to get the 76% higher number than if you take your benefit at 62. Now, I want to ha hasten to say that for many, many households, taking your benefit at 70 is not optimal. You may want to take your benefit at 62. If you're that uh, husband who's 62 and they've got a, has a younger wife and a, a disabled child, he may want to take his benefit early in order to get benefits going for his wife and his child. So it's a different uh, optimal solution for each person, really. But in the main, we're taking our benefits far too early. In the main, we're not understanding all the benefits are, that are available to us. In the main, we're not timing things correctly. Mm -hmm. That requires knowledge and also software to get the two things uh, straight. Good, I love your analogy about comparing it to insurance and a catastrophic loss. I think that's very, very yeah. insightful. A lot of engineer types try to analyze the numbers as, to, as if it were just a mathematical equation. They fail to realize that a uh, catastrophic loss is what they really need to protect against. But let's have some yeah. fun for a couple minutes here. Let's talk about politics. Uh, everybody remembers okay. Clinton's, it's the economy, stupid, you know, the slogan from more than 20 years ago. But it's kind of sort of still the economy, isn't it? What is the economy? And, but I think it's more uh, our children. So my slogan for my campaign is, it's our children. I'm not calling anybody stupid. I'm just saying it's our children. Mm -hmm. And the economy obviously is critical to our children, also to ourselves. But we also have, over the years, accumulated a massive uh, fiscal bill that we're leaving our kids a massive indebtedness that we're keeping off the books to pay for all the entitlement programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And I value and cherish those programs, but the way we finance those programs is on the backs of our kids and grandchildren. So we have an enormous uh, economic time bomb that we've laid under their legs, and we have to address that. We have to be honest. So I started this writing campaign. I wrote a 130-page book de detailing exactly how I would fix things. It's a very readable book. It's not going to put you to sleep. It says, in very short order, how to fix each of our major problems. Social Security, the tax system, the banking system, the health care system, uh, the, the energy policy, education, the way economists think about these things. I'm, I'm speaking in large part for my profession. I'm an economist. I'm the first economist to ever run for president. My website is kotlikov2016.com. I hope everybody will come and volunteer to help me and to spread the word about the website. Read the book forward the book and uh, let's realize that our part, the two parties are really not out for us. They're really out for themselves. They're out for of preserving course. their own power. Uh, we, need some old, we need some real answers. We need to fix these problems. And we also need to be very firm with enemies like mm -hmm. North Korea and Iran when they're building miniaturized nuclear bombs in the case of North Korea that they can put on ballistic miss missiles that they're now sure. testing every day. Well, not every day, but um, routinely to hit us. So, and we're just sitting back, our politicians are sitting back ignoring that. So I'm uh, offering a very bold leadership with respect to uh, economic reform and with respect to foreign policy action because we can't just sit back and say our kids will deal with the problem of North Korea having ballistic missiles that can hit everywhere in the country. No way. Mm -hmm. I, you're preaching to the choir in many ways. I agree completely. So in the 30 seconds or so we have left, you know, tell us, you know that it's difficult, if not impossible, as a write-in candidate to actually attain the presidency. So, so tell our viewers what you hope to achieve by this effort. Well, I do expect to become president. You know, it's it was difficult for the Ukrainians to get together and overthrow their dictator. It was difficult for the Egyptians to get together and overthrow Mubarak. But the way they did that was with the Internet. The Internet is really empowering each of us to have a huge megaphone. So if each of us would go to this website, kotlikov2016.com, and let everybody in the country know that all they have to do is go to the poll and write me in and my vice presidential candidate. It's just going to be you know, Lawrence Kotlikov for president uh, and whoever the vice president is for vice president. Uh, that's just as easy as pulling a lever for a politician that you don't want. 57% of our country do not want either uh, Secretary Clinton or Mr. Trump mm -hmm. to be president. I'm offering an option. And I've, and I've actually read your, your, uh, your paper um, you know, for president, but don't write me in. So that's at your website. So for our viewers, or, or I'm sorry, I, I think I misspoke. I'm right here. It it's says, a, write me yeah, in, but write don't me send in, me don't. a penny. That's right. 
Yeah, I'm trying to get across the idea that it's not money that we need, it's votes. And it's, it's um, viral exchange of information. We need a network to just expand and expand exponentially. And they've done this all around mm -hmm. the world with political organizations, and we can do it here in the U.S. We do not need to be beholden to the Democrats or Republicans anymore. They're passe. You can go to Dr. Kolokoff's website. You can get his white paper. Write me in, but don't send me a penny. Doctor, thank you very much for your time today. I very much appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll be right back in a minute with Morgan Thompson, and she and I will talk about strategies that can help you get the most out of the Social Security system. Stay with us. We'll be right back.